Welcome to Strong Drink, a Hebrews study. This is episode 12, and we're going to hop into chapter 8. I'm Paul Winskowski, and we are joined, as always, with my amazing co-host, Matt Bostwick. Thanks for joining us, Matt. <laughs> You're like in the parade. The parade hand. <laughs> the parade hand. It's, not a, it's just a turn. Not, a, not one of those things. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, thanks for joining us, and we're excited to have you guys for this week. This is a 13-verse chapter, but we got this packed full of goodies, and um, we're really right now going to jump in. So let us just kick it off with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us this time and this space and this voice to preach the gospel, to preach the word of reconciliation to the nations, to the world, to the cosmos. <laughs> We give you all the glory and praise, Jesus. You are the perfect man, and you are the loving God. You, in your person and work, reveal the heart of the Father. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you illuminate our mind, that you turn our eyes into our ears so that we may hear and then see the goodness of God. In Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> bing, bing, bing. All right, we're going to hop right into this and get into the slides. First off, we wanted to do kind of a review of some theological terms that um, I think best describe, as the author puts it here, the main point of this whole thing. <laughs> and just kind of do a quick refresher course the vicarious humanity of christ termed referring to the fact that christ in his humanity stands in our place and represents us oh so that what is true of his humanity is true of us <laughs> there's a lot of whack on this definition and what he did in his or our humanity is our <laughs> is ours R. R. R is R. You gotta you gotta do this with a pirate thing. An R. <laughs> uh, Latin vicarious acting in the place of another. Wow. Yeah. I mean, there's so much whack on this term. I mean, gosh, we could just sit here and just talk about this for like the next hour. Like <laughs> seriously, seriously. So, I mean, the term referring to the fact that Christ and his humanity stands in our place and represents us so that what is true of his humanity is true of us. And what he did in his uh, humanity is ours. Wow. What Jesus did is ours. Whoa. Whoa. And we get it. We get <laughs> what Jesus brought for us. He gives us the good stuff. He gives us the good stuff. And he did all the work. And it's just easy. Whoa. Yes. You know, I think that that's just a, it's just a simple thing, but we, it's something to, to meditate on. Whoa. Yes. You know, like, a, like Galatians 2.20, you know, I have died. I've been co-crucified with Christ or second Corinthians five, you know, where Paul says we used to know Christ by the flesh, but we know him no longer for if one died for all, therefore all died. Right. So we're seeing this, this vicariousness, this acting in the place of another. And we, I think this also is extremely important to consider when it comes to his humanity being, as we've noted in the previous episodes, but this is the drink that keeps on giving, is that his humanity is a full assumption of our humanity. He is, by strict objective definition, fully man. <laughs> Yeah, fully man and fully God. Whoa, whoa, there's a lot of ding, ding, ding on that. Fully man and fully God. Oh, man, we could just keep on being here, but let's let's go through this. Atonement, the divine. And so the kind of the purpose of this is to keep these kind of little terms in mind when we read uh, Hebrews 8. So, to, you know, we're, we're going to return back to these kind of things. So atonement, the divine work of covering and putting away sin, thus creating at one minute between God and man, the term is especially used of Christ's work of salvation when culminated in his death and divine human self-offering and sacrifice at the cross. Whoa, wow. whoa, whoa. So this is the work of reconciliation, right? So we've been re reconciled. Whoa, 
whoa, back to God, whoa, and now we're at peace with God, whoa. So the things that blocked us from God, Christ removed all those things, whoa. Yes. And then he and he and he put and he unified us, whoa, with himself. So we're 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 cool with the king. So we're all good. <laughs> Cool we're, with the king. Yeah. We're, we're cool with the king. We're all good. <laughs> we're all good in this neighborhood. Whoa. 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 Yeah, it's it's it, we're we're all doing very well with God now because he's uh made us at one. Whoa. Yes. Yeah. It's like it's like shooting an arrow and hitting the mark. As uh we'll we'll read from a commentary from the Mirror Bible is it's sin is a missing of the mark. It's a falling short of the will and the created, you know, value of who you are and what God has made you for. And the thing about it is, is that the law is the tutor that leads us to Christ. So the re the revelation of our sin, the revealing of our sin by the law given to Moses reveals the fact that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, that all require a savior. So when we look at the vicarious humanity of Christ and we see it in that he was fully man, we then see that through his atoning work, right? Torrance says in this terms, especially used for Christ's work of salvation, which is culm uh, culminated in his death, divine human self-offering and sacrifice on the cross. And I don't think I'm out of bounds here, Matty B, correct me if I'm wrong, that this atonement doesn't strictly, but culminated in, it, it had its its climax on the cross, but really the, the, the will of God, the agreement of the word, the incarnation of him, and the whole life and resurrection and ascension is the atonement, right? The atoning work, if you would. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it it, it covers <laughs> both his life and his work. Whoa! It's yeah. a it, it's a it's a it's a package deal. It's a package deal. It's not a it's not an atomized Newtonian little split off little thing. It's it's a package deal. It's a package. Yeah. You get the full package in Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even cost you extra. It just costed him everything. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You get you get the full package. He did all the work. Yeah. You know, yes. that, that that's the atonement. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> you get the full package and he did all the work. Oh yeah. shing ding 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 ding. Yeah, yeah. So this is a this is, so atonement and reconciliation, they're kind of like they're really tied terms. The two terms are pretty tied together. So we'll read through this. Recon reconciliation, atonement as the personal reconciling of God and humanity in the person of Christ through the wonderful exchange he worked out in his divine and human life, exchanging our sin for his righteousness, our corruption and death for his life. Whoa. And we've been kind of like explaining that in the atonement. Whoa, they're like, it's, it's a package thing, right? Whoa, it's all together. Another way to say atonement, reconciliation, whoa, if you want to just like, like make it simpler, everything that Jesus Christ is and everything he's done. Yeah, so, wow. Whoa. You know, it's just, it's just, it's just, uh, that's all it is. So these are just theological terms. So we like to use big terms, but uh, yeah, sometimes the big terms do help you like dig whoa, into what Jesus Christ has done. So that's the only purpose for it. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. Like, the, and this, this comes straight from what Paul says that he became sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And this goes again to the vicarious humanity of Christ. He assumed our fall and depraved humanity, which was bent to death and back into the return of the abyss of nothingness from which it came you know so what christ did when he assumed it is he assumed it even unto death not that he was deserving of it but he took it on himself and because strictly because jesus is god in that death he was then conquered it so he conquered death through death this is a mystery i mean we all went through easter this this weekend and and i'm sure we all heard some type of of resurrection story or or thought but let us not forget that this is the mystery of the ages finally revealed at the end of time which is christ jesus shing ding ding <laughs> yeah shabba dabba ding dong ding dong okay so the last one covenant 
an unconditional agreement between two parties as opposed to a contract, an agreement based on mutual conditions, right? So those are, they're in opposition, right? right. It's not a contract. Covenant is not a contract. Okay, so yes. used in the Bible principally for the unconditional promise of God to his people. I will be your God and you will be my people, which was fulfilled in both sides in the, in the new covenant in Jesus, right? Whoa, whoa. So, I mean, so first of all, I mean, it's not a contract, right? So your agreement with Jesus Christ is not a contract. You, you don't have to, you don't have to sign at the dotted line and <laughs> messed up your you're out of the contract or you get fined or whatever. It's not that way, right? It's 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 not that. It's it's based on Jesus's love. Whoa, for you. Whoa. And you, whoa, whoa, in Christ returning that love. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Which is even just a reflection of his love. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. So Jesus has um fulfilled both sides of the co uh, contract, or not really contract, both sides of the covenant, right? So he's done your part. And he's done his part. He did both parts. Yes. And that's the brilliance of Jesus coming in the flesh. Whoa, whoa. It's just he did the things of man as man. Whoa, mm. whoa, whoa, whoa. So he took on our side when he became uh, incarnate, when he took on flesh. And he actually fulfilled everything that we were supposed to do to make ourselves uh, to work work out our side of the the covenant whoa, with God whoa and so we have a mediated covenant we don't have to do the work we just trust in what Christ did like we're not like trying to <laughs> do the works of the law or be righteous in every way to, whoa, in order for God to accept us no Christ did everything that was acceptable towards God whoa yes. well on our behalf and we just receive that righteousness we receive the good things he's done and we just rest in his work whoa. and now we're right before the father whoa mm. in every way whoa 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 <laughs> whoa whoa so we're we're all we're all right with God that's yeah. really all it comes down to is we're all right we're all right <laughs> we're all right with God <laughs> we're all right with him yeah. so that's that's what covenant's all about right and all, all we do is just say yes and amen i mean the the fact of the matter is the reformers say is it's grace the whole way Whoa. it is nothing but grace Whoa. there is nothing we do or can do or can muster up there's nothing natural to us that we can shing ding our way out of it it is grace. It is grace that we were created. It is grace that he has made a promise to be our God. It is grace that he is, is the way, the truth, and the life of that promise in which he lived out our humanity. And it is the truth, once and for all, can I use a, a vicarious humanity of Christ, in which we failed, he succeeded. Where we weren't good enough, he was enough for us. And our not good enough was not that the Father was disappointed, but that the Son was to be glorified and that we would be unified into his relationship with his Father by the Holy Spirit. Shing, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> yes and amen. Yes and amen. So now that we've revert, viewed these theological terms, let's, let's start going through this. I mean, this is a short chapter. Um, it's, it's really 13 verses, but... It's really, whoa, whoa, it's con contrasting the, um, the, the old covenant and the new covenant. Um, and it's really just saying very, in very simple terms that the old covenant's going away. And that's not as handy. And <laughs> Jesus Christ is really handy. He's really good, you know. He's, <laughs> he, he really helps out, you know. He's and, willing uh, and able. <laughs> he's willing and able. He's willing and able. And that's really... That's really uh, Hebrews eight in a nutshell, and let's let's expand on that thought. He wrote a whole thing, so or she, we don't know who the author is. So, all right, okay. So this is one through seven. Now this is the main point of the things we are saying. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the Majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary. And the true tabernacle, which the Lord erected and not man, for every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. Therefore, it is necessary that this one 
also have something to offer. For if he were on earth, he would not be a priest, since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law, who serve the copy and shadow of the heavenly things. As Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle, for he said, see that you make all things according to the pattern shown on the mountain. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry. More excellent. In as much as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Yeah, that's the word of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's start breaking this apart. I mean, uh, yeah, this is it, it's it's this 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 stuff is a little bit easier. It's it's a little bit easier to grasp some of these things in some of the prior chapters, Hebrews eight one and two. Um, now this is the main point of the things we are saying. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and the true tabernacle, which the Lord erected and not man. And here's the, paraf the paraphrase in the voice. So let me sum up what we've covered so far. For there is much we have said. We have, have a high priest, a perfect priest, who sits in the place of honor in the highest heavens at the right hand of the throne of the majestic one, a minister within the heavenly sanctuary set up by the Lord, not by human hands. Yes. Whoa, shing, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> so this, this is, this is kind of crazy right here because we like a lot of times people, whoa, they're the, these kind of verses right here kind of illuminate the, the thought of the writer. And so the thought of the writer is that this is the this is the the main point. We're <laughs> actually reading the main point here. And if you wondered what is the main point according to the author of Hebrews, <laughs> here we go. One and two. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord erected and not man. And so a lot of this stuff that he's doing throughout the book of Hebrews, or she's doing, is breaking apart this thought. Whoa, this is the main point. Wow. And so the, the main point is, is that, whoa, the Son of God, whoa, has finished the work. Shing, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> and is seated at the highest place of honor. Whoa, yes. Whoa, 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 whoa. And the things of earth that we look at in the Levitical covenant are simply shadows. Whoa. And uh, we, uh, have less substance than the true thing, which is the heavenly thing. Whoa, yeah. whoa. And that God himself, whoa, 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 forgave our sins in the heavenly places. Whoa. And have fully made us righteous in him. Whoa. Where we can sit. <laughs> In heavenly places before our Father, God the Father, whoa, wow. at his right hand in Christ. Whoa. Wow. So God, God has made a way into heaven and has made a way where we can actually seat, sit down at the right hand of the Father. Whoa, whoa, whoa. By an eternal priest who is offering up himself whoa, on our behalf. Wow. Whoa, whoa. Where we can approach easily. Whoa, whoa, into heavenly places because of the finished work of Christ um, and because Christ himself is uh, empathetic towards our weaknesses and our infirmities, the issues that keep us from him and uh, can mediate himself to us so that we can live a life uh, where we're always before the Father in love. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. So if there's a lot of stuff going on in this one and two. It's it's th th these. This was very dense kind of material right here, um, and it takes the author I think two or three chapters to break apart the, these two verses. Yeah. So it's it's expanded upon, and I think two or three chapters. I think it goes all the way to eleven. It could be twelve, just yeah. to explain this. So. 
Uh, he goes into the first part is covenant, right? Ooh, and he's trying to explain how Jesus is the minister of the new covenant, ooh, which has better promises versus the old covenant, which had not as good promises. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's where he starts off with. But this is the premise right here is, is that we we got it and we got it all. And whoa, well, we got the best stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not our fault. Whoa, whoa. And it's so much better than what came before. So, yeah, like the, the, the Levitical priesthood would offer up once for themselves and then for the people uh, the blood of a sacrifice, you know, for their sins. But what, but what happened to that sacrifice? What happened when they laid that sacrifice on the altar? Literally, it got burnt up. It failed to remain. Its ashes were used in ceremonial washings and cleansings. And what happened to that priest and the people? They again fell back into rebellion and sin. It was not an efficacious or effectual covenant. It could not fulfill the promises of I will be their people, in which even Adam in the garden strayed and was disobedient. But Christ, in his obedience, in his humanity, in our place, for us and as us, as both fully God and fully man, was more than able. And what he does is he sits as the lamb forever slain and worshipped. Holy, holy, holy is the lamb who was slain, who is worthy to open the scroll. <laughs> he stands as a sacrifice not burnt up by the flames inadequate to save or deliver, but he stands broken and bleeding from his side. Put your finger in my side. Touch my hands, Thomas, for it is me, Jesus Christ, who lives. <laughs> Shing ding ding. And he lives as God, revealing his love to man. And he lives as man, obediently laid bare to God. And we now sit, not in like the mountain in which when an animal would walk up to it, they must be stoned and that no man could go to, yet he would die. But we have the eternal one, the one who did die and then rose and who forever, as Maddie B said, mediates this covenant promise for us and as us. <laughs> yeah, shing, ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Yeah. So let's read this little quote over here. I mean, Paul, if you want to read it, we can't, you could read it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The perfect priest, both the character of his present priestly office and of his royal dignity are indicated by his position with revelation, sorry, with relation to the Father, seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens. While an earthly priest would stand in the performance of his duties, the heavenly priest is seated, which fact, according to St. Basil the Great, demonstrates the immutability, the unchanging of his office. He also tells us that the place on the right hand indicates equality of honor. Whoa. Woo. Woo -hoo. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, I think the author is saying this stuff in a little bit complicated way, but it, it, the, the, the truth is simple, really. You know, Christ is never going to stop mediating himself Whoa, to you. That position is eternal. And the Father is sworn, whoa, sworn that Christ will always be a high priest, whoa, well, on behalf of man. That's what Psalm 110 is partially about, right? Whoa. Yes. So Jesus will always be merciful towards you, whoa, will always be thinking about your infirmities, whoa, will always be thinking about the issues and concerns and uh, problems of your humanity, and will mediate himself to you. Whoa. In that he will, he will, he's going to God on your behalf. Whoa. Yes. And taking the things of God and giving them to you. Whoa. <laughs> and will always be doing that on your behalf. Whoa. 
well, and taking the thing, your cares and concerns and, and be presenting them before God. Whoa. Yes. You will always be doing that on your behalf for all time, for all time. And you never have to worry about, whoa, an unsympathetic God. Wow. You will always have a God who is sympathetic towards you for all time. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Whoa, and I, I think that that's the issue that a lot of people run into with God. Whoa, is they're thinking that God's un, un, unsympathetic, right? Yes. Whoa. That God's like this lightning bolt in the sky kind of God who's <laughs> looking to throw a bolt of lightning. No, that's not the God we serve. We serve a God who's a high priest. Whoa. Wow. Uh, and part of the qualifications of being a high priest, whoa, is that that person would have to be a human. Whoa. And yes. God has become human on our behalf. Whoa. Whoa. And God has felt all the pains and sufferings of humanity and placed them onto himself. So God himself knows how you feel. Whoa. Yes. Yeah. Whoa. And can wow. mediate. Whoa, whoa, between God and you, he can take your suffering and give you healing and rest for your sorrows. Whoa. Thank you, Jesus. Whoa, whoa. And God will forever do that on your behalf. Whoa, whoa. You can trust Jesus. Whoa. You can trust Jesus. Jesus is never going to stop caring for you and is never going to stop thinking about the issues, cares, and concerns that you have in your life for all yeah. time whoa yes you know yeah yeah what is it what does torrent say in in choosing you god has chosen to not be god without you and that means all of you all of us right the vicarious humanity so when it says the place on the right hand indi indicates equality of honor servant leadership the servant king honors his creation by emptying himself into it and taking it on as maddie b said what an honor and now we've been elevated we sit on the throne in christ jesus we have been given it all shing ding ding <laughs> yeah 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 i mean to me this is really good news i mean uh, i mean there's there's times that whoa well, I've, I've had issues and concerns and like failings in life, you know, and uh, to know that God himself cares about me and my humanity, or, you know, and to know that I'm never alone in how I feel, but God himself is feeling those things has been a great, uh, a great thing, a great thing in my life. Whoa, yes. whoa, whoa, whoa. And I, I feel like sometimes we want to, skip over like our personal humanity and go straight into like God's identity. Whoa. But that's not the way that God did it. He <laughs> celebrates how we feel by becoming a human being. Whoa. And then he, he honors us by taking on our sufferings and our cares and our wounds, our lies, our issues and places them on himself, assuming our humanity. And then he bends it back into uh, uh, perfection into the righteousness of God. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. 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 <laughs> so God is not like skipping over like our cares and issues and concerns and, and feelings. He doesn't skip, skip over them. He takes them upon himself and moves them into a righteousness with God. Whoa. Whoa. Yes. yes. So anyways, um, but to me, that's really good news. Whoa. Amen. Whoa. And it also <laughs> helps you deal with your buddies, too. Like, sometimes you're dealing with people and it's like, whoa. Like, like we're, we, we're, we function as priests through, the high, through Christ's priesthood for humanity. Yes. And wow. so sometimes, whoa. like, I'm de dealing with people and people are, like, going through an issue or a concern. I don't skip over their humanity, you know? Yeah. I don't Come skip on. over their concerns and issues. I embrace them where they're at, whoa, in their failings, in their in their hurts, in their canes, whoa, and then I let Christ uh, transcend those things, take yes. them through those things into His healing and His redemption and so forth, you know. So whoa, whoa, and I let them, you know, talk essentially. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what, what does it say? Preach the gospel. 
everywhere you go and if you have to use your words you know yeah yeah that's so yeah. good maddie b so yeah. good shame yeah. ding 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 forever a man in heaven christ then becomes priest of the resurrection as w manson expressed it he who has opened up a way into the very presence of god in heaven itself is he who by the power of an endless life ever lives as our intercessor and in him our hope is anchored within the veil by ascending to the throne of god christ as high priest is also our king and as such in the oneness of his priestly and kingly functions he is minister or le torgas of the true tabernacle and its heavenly intercession and liturgy that is regarded as eschatologically not platonically related to the worship of god's children on earth shing <laughs> paul do you want to talk about it because i don't want to <laughs> <laughs> yeah um well uh, he's both the the king but he is also the priest so um kingly function is ruling the ruler right he is the, the one to be worshipped he's the one that worship is um offered to right as god and king and so levitical sacrifices and priesthood was an act of worship their liturgy, their sacrifices, their cleansings, these were all acts of worship of Israel, the children of God, to their king, right? Because if we remember before Saul, God was like, I will be your king. You will be my people. I will be your God. You will be my people. So in this, we see that it continues to be the mediation of the God-man. Right? He is both the king and the priest and functions as such in an eschatological way, right? in, in, a, in a very real sense, in a very revelatory, um, ontological, like we're talking uh, uh, fact of all facts. Like he is king and priest and sacrifice. That, that's what I get from, from that. And, and how does he do it? Because he is eternally man, endless with an endless life. He is eternally sacrificed and that he still bears the humanity that he has. And he is eternally God and that he is the only begotten son of God. <laughs> uh, whoa, there's a lot in there. Yeah, yeah well, and I guess the priest of the resurrection speaks eschatologically in that he is the last Adam. Whatever Adamic history we had has been now completed, finished, and done away with and is fading away as the author of Hebrews is saying in a way in which he is now instituting a kainos covenant, a kainos creation, an altogether new reality in which he is king and high priest forever. <laughs> Yee, shing, ding, ding. So eight, three through five, for every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. Therefore it is necessary that this one also have something to offer. For if he were on earth, he would not be a priest, since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law, who serve the copy and the shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle. For he said, see that you make all things according to the pattern shown on the mountain and the message. The signed task of the high priest is to offer both gifts and sacrifices, and it's no different with the priesthood of Jesus. If he were limited to earth, he wouldn't even be a priest. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, it's fun how he puts that. We wouldn't need him since there are plenty of priests who offer the gifts designated in the law. Yes. These priests provide only a hint of what goes on in the true sanctuary of heaven, which Moses caught a glimpse of as he was about to set up the tent shrine. It was then that God said, be careful to do it exactly as you saw it on the mountain. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, this, this is a very interesting thing. And, and I don't know if we can skip forward two slides, but whoa, 
there's a uh, definition for shadow. So let's let's just read this really quick. In three New Testament passages, shadow is used for that which it represents or is a copy of something else that is more real or substantial than the shadow. So, I mean, just to make this super simple, oh, the, uh, the Levitical stuff, like the priests, the Old Covenant, Old Testament, Moses and all that stuff with the tabernacle and everything, that was the shadow, right? A shadow doesn't have much substance, right? It just blocks the light. It makes a shape. You can see like a pattern of something. Whoa. But there's mm. there's no substance. You can't like interact with a shadow. You can't like you, you can't like like let the shadow serve you a drink. <laughs> <laughs> the, the shadow is not going to serve you a drink, right? Whoa, whoa, whoa. But Jesus Christ is, um, he, he's, he's the, the image, you know, he's the real deal. He's not the shadow. Yeah. He's the thing that the shadow comes from. Whoa, 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 whoa. He, uh, he's the anti-type. Those things are the type. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. He's the real deal. And those things are, are just kind of like, like, like imitation the models, right? You know, whoa. they yeah. don't have the real substance. They don't really make sin go away. They don't really bring you fully to God. It's kind of like a foretaste, but it's not the fullness of, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't get you into heavenly places. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't like satisfy sin for, uh, on, for all time. Whoa, whoa. Those things are, are temporary things to point uh, towards Jesus Christ, who is the fulfillment of the law, who is the satisfaction, whoa, 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 for our sin and, and, and all those things uh, on our behalf. Whoa, whoa. So we can fully enter into the presence of God for all time behind the veil and, yes. uh, and sit at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places, in Christ, Whoa, for all time. Whoa, whoa. The, 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 the Levitical priesthood could, couldn't get you there. It, 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 it pushed us in the right direction, you know, and it, it foretold of good things which were to come. You know, it was, uh, it was, it was cool in that way. Old OT is cool. It doesn't, but it doesn't get you all the way there. You know, yes. it's, it, it's, it's, it doesn't, it lacks substance. It lacks meat. It lacks a drink it it, it 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 it's not the thing it's not the 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 oreos and, and milk it, it's just it's just not whoa whoa it's just not the whole thing it's just not the package right christ is the package whoa, whoa. yeah those things were shadows of the the real deal yeah yeah wow 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 whoa whoa come on come on come on come on yeah yeah Shing, 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 shing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Give them the real deal, man. We've been given the real deal. We have it. We have it all. We have Jesus. We've been given the real deal. We're not waiting for something to come. Jesus has come in the flesh and he's died on our behalf and he's given us the good things of God. We're being resurrected to the Father. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And we're now we're seated in heavenly places in him. We, we, we've yeah. been given the fullness. We've been given <laughs> the fullness in Christ. We're not waiting for something to happen. We're not like the old covenant believers waiting for a Messiah to, to set us free from the sins and return us back to God and give us the fullness of who, who God is. No, that thing's already happened. So that's yeah. that's uh, oh, oh, that's kind of the difference between this, this shadow and the real deal. Like the real deal uh, it, it ha is, it has substance. And when the light hits it, it forms a shadow where there's no... In the shadow, there's no uh, whoa, whoa, substance. It's just an uh, outline. It's a pale outline. Whoa, yeah. whoa. Jesus is the real deal. He's the, yes. he's, he's the real deal. Wow. wow. The word of God sacrificed his flesh for our salvation. I am very much surprised how they have ventured to entertain the idea that the word became man in consequence of his nature. For if this were so, the commemoration of Mary would be superfluous. For nature has no conception of a virgin bearing apart from a man. By the good pleasure of the Father 
being true God and word and wisdom of the Father by nature, he became man in the body for our salvation in order that having something to offer for us, he might save us all. As many as through fear of death were all their lifetimes subject to bondage. For it was not some man that gave himself up for us, since every man is under the sentence of death, according to what was said to all in Adam. Earth you are, and unto earth you shall return. Nor yet was it any other of the creatures, since every creature is liable to change. But the word himself offered his own body on our behalf, that our faith and hope might not be in man, but that we might have our faith in God, the word himself. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I, to me, this speaks of whoa, whoa, the vicarious humanity of Christ, whoa, you know, and that he did the work on our behalf. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And he took away death itself. Whoa, yes. whoa, whoa. And now we've been reconciled to God, seated at the right hand of the Father in him. Whoa, shing, ding, ding, ding. Yes. You know, whoa. Whoa. Yeah, I love I love what he says that the idea that the word became man in consequence of his nature. Right? And what he means what he means to say here when he says the commemoration of Mary, the mother of God. <laughs> She's not the mother of a, a mere man. But of the word become incarnate, the one and only king himself who was who is and who will forever be our great high priest, our brother, our friend, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, born of the Virgin, suffered under Pontius Pilate, died on the cross, resurrected in three days, and who is now seated at the right hand of the Father on high. Wow, whoa, whoa, and who will? Return again to judge the living and the dead. For his is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> oh, the old church fathers get me a little liturgical. <laughs> Let's see here. Right. Hebrews 8.6, uh, New King James. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry in so much as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. Paraphrase from the Mere Bible. Jesus is now the fulfillment of all those promises towards which the old practices were merely pointing. As when an arrow strikes the bullseye, the dispensation he now administers is far superior to the old. He is the arbiter, arbiter of a more effective covenant, sanctioned by its being an announcement of far greater benefit to mankind. <laughs> I like that. Better promises, and I like how Francois says, better benef greater benefit to mankind. I love that. I think that's a great um, correlation. Yeah. Right, Paul says, for, for if righteousness came from the law, then there would be no reason for Christ, right? And I think that's also what Athanasius was trying to say and what, you know, this whole, the author is just trying to speak strictly to the supremacy of the God-man, Jesus Christ. And, and you know, even, even Adam was told by God, do not eat of that tree or you shall surely die you know that that speaks to in a will and, and an offering of faith and obedience 
from the one to keep a commandment. <laughs> Shing, ding, 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 ding. And he couldn't do it. He couldn't do it because all fall short. We are all subject to sin and death. We've all been born into a humanity, which if you want to say that you have no part in a depraved human nature, in a fallen world, in a fallen humanity, then you have no part in the one who assumed it and took it on for you and as you. If you do not identify with the sinner made saint, with the corruptible putting on incorruption, with the reconciliation and redemption of humanity to its God in Christ, then you take no part. As, as John says, if you say you're without sin, you deceive yourself. But let us not forget that if any man does sin, he is a mediator between God and man, and that man is Jesus Christ. Oh, sha da da da, shing ding ding. Yeah, I, I, I think those are good points. I, I think one of the things that, oh, at least the movements that I've been a part of, whoa, they sometimes there's like different movements that they overemphasize sin. And um, I think that's an issue too. Like if you're, if you're always saying that you're a dirty, rotten sinner and, uh, you, you know, like it, it creates like kind of a weird thing where you're not connecting with God very well. Yes. You know, it really, because the emphasis is on, like, usually in those movements, the emphasis is on what you need to do to get better in order to receive the goodness of God. But that's totally anti-gospel, in my opinion, because yes. that's, that's, that's not, that's not, has nothing to do with the gospel. Because oh, Jesus Christ is the good news that what he did made us better before God, right? So that's, that's, a, I, I think that overemphasis on sin is sometimes really detrimental to the faith. Whoa, whoa, you know, and uh, and it's not honoring of what Christ has done. Right, Christ took upon on Himself our sin, our issues, our our our, our uh, problems, and uh, bent it back. Uh, whoa, into the righteousness of God. Whoa. Yes. So ultimately, what happens is is we are righteous before God. That is the ultimate thing. It is a finished work. Christ did do the work and I, I think it's okay to call ourselves righteous i think that there's also oh, sometimes there's this other thing where people just totally like they they, they don't go fully through the cross yes, yes well they don't go fully through the assumption of, of christ's humanity and i think that's the other maybe extreme sometimes and then they're like there's like this attitude. They're like, "Whoa, you can't call me wrong. I've never done anything wrong in my life. Christ has always has made me righteous, or whatever. I'm I'm, ter I'm perfect. I'm whole." And I I think there's there's some truth to that. And I think, but I think also too, uh, sometimes just in life, where you're just gonna you're gonna see imperfections in your life, and to not uh, to just totally ignore all those things and not offer the you know, give those things up to God in his yeah. assignment of humanity and making us righteous before God and just honoring what Christ has done in that place in our lives where we're dealing with an issue. Sometimes it, it, that could be disconcerting too. So yeah. I, I think there's like this issue where on one whoa, whoa, extreme, we're saying that we're a dirty, rotten sinner yeah. And then on another extreme, we're like, whoa, whoa, just like completely ignoring what Christ has done and assuming our humanity in, in the here and now. Whoa, yes. whoa. And we're just kind of speeding through like real fast. Um, I, 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 I think we, if, if I were to lean one way, I would say we should probably should lean more into our righteousness, especially in this time. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, because that's really the end, end goal and what Christ has done. But I, I think sometimes, too, uh, the, the issue is, is when we, we, we take out that whole concept of sin, we're, we're, now we're just as a God and untouchable, you know? Yeah. Um, and I think there's a problem with that because uh, I think a lot of us are still dealing with 
with issues or whoa, whoa, ramifications of sin, which are confusion, which are whoa, like uh, you know, believing in things that are maybe greater than God or whatever. Um, and we're still wrestling with those things in our mind, um, you know, and to say to speed through all that stuff. Whoa, whoa. And not say that, hey, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling here with thinking that my job is more important than Christ or whoa, whoa, my relationships, with my girlfriend is more important than God. It, it, thinking that money is more like to, to speed by those issues. Well, I don't. I don't think that's wise. Yeah, I think that it's 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 more wise to whoa, whoa, whoa. Allow Christ to deal with those things in our heart. Whoa, 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 and bring us to that place of perfection, knowing that He's already paid the price, knowing that He is our high priest, knowing that He does. Uh, he is merciful towards our humanity. Yes. Knowing that he will forever be a mediator towards mankind, and he's not judging you. Knowing that he's already taken all judgment on the cross, and allowing ourselves to go through that, yes. you know, rather than skip around it, you know. Yes. Oh, whoa, yeah. whoa, whoa! I think is wise. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's, that's really skip good. through it, you know, and I think we don't want to skip through that. We want to offer those things up to the Lord and let him minister to us mercy and grace in those areas as high priest and say that, listen, you are righteous. Listen, you are holy. You are you, you never, you know, all those issues of uh, putting other things first. I put those those things under the cross and yeah. I will allow you to be uh, to to walk with my father in the cool of the day. And Come things on. are good between you and God. You are as righteous as 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 uh as as the white snow. Whoa, mm. whoa, 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 and you're perfect in me, you know? But allowing yeah. God to minister to us mercy in our time of need, I think is helpful. Yes. You know? Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was whoa. that was spot on. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We we can't be one ditch or the other. We have to be we have to be just seated strictly in Christ. You know, it's it's not look at me and what I am not doing in my in my righteous, my own righteousness. I mean, come on. But it's also not look what I'm doing in my unresolved sin, right? We 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 sit in the grace of God and we allow him to have his way with our heart. <laughs> Come moldable. We become receivers of the gift instead of ones that either A, want to say we're worthy of it or B, say we're not. Just receive, just receive. Yeah. And, and I, I think there's also this other issue is when we say we're a sinner versus not sinner, I, I, I think that there's this issue where we don't even really understand what that word sin even means, really. Whoa. Yes. Whoa. And that's part of the reason why we don't want those titles, you know. And I think when we say sinner, we're thinking about like this, your disgusting being <laughs> that God could never love. Yeah, and that's not the image I think that whoa, is painted in whoa, <laughs> the Bible. No, you know, you, the, you, Christ sees value in you. You are a valuable thing. You know, He created you in His image, and He sees perfect value in us. Sin is a delusion of the mind. Whoa, yes. whoa, whoa, that it, it, a form of idolatry in many ways. Whoa, whoa, that puts other things above God. Whoa, yeah. whoa. So if we see it correctly, we will understand how to appropriate sin in the cross. Whoa, yes. whoa, rather than uh, just be this, this thing where I'm a dirty, rotten sinner. That, no, you're not a dirty, rotten sinner. Yeah. Like that that yeah. image that 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 whole thing is wrong whoa, yeah whoa christ died for a fallen humanity to pull them up whoa and, and the way that god sees you is perfect and righteous we just don't see it that way that see that about ourselves whoa 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 we don't see ourselves in him we don't see ourselves as him and that is part of the sin mentality that God wants to cut out of your life to show that you are the righteousness of God in him. 
Yes, whoa, yeah, whoa, yes. Whoa, yeah. whoa, that you're beautiful, that you're perfect, you know, that you're lovely in his face, you know, you're lovely in his sight. And that's totally different. Whoa, I think the biblical understanding of sinfulness and righteousness is totally different than the last 100 years of whoa, American evangelical preaching. So some of that stuff like we're dealing with when we'd have to talk about these things because we're having to unwind yeah. this evangelicalism that's not necessarily what I believe the Bible is actually saying when you go and you read the definitions of these things. Yes. So, uh, you know, like, I, and I think that that's also what creates all this fear and worry when we read a text like uh, 1 John, where, you know, which does talk about if any man says he does not sin. Whoa, whoa. If any man does, says that he doesn't have a problem whoa, 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 with seeing God as less than in his eyes, whoa, 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 Christ will forgive that and remove that lesser God out of your mind and yes. show you that he's more than enough and that he's made you more than enough. Whoa. Yeah. He'll cut that sinful mentality out of your mind and show that you are the righteousness of God. And that is what the cross is all about. Whoa. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Circumcision, Whoa. it's been cut away. <laughs> yeah. Shing, ding, 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 ding. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That's Hopefully that explains and illuminates. If, if there's questions, please email us you know, or text us. We'll be happy to share with you our position on these things. I know that this is not ooh, necessarily what uh, mainstreamed uh, evangelical preachers are teaching on. Whoa, whoa, but, you know, just send us a note and we'll talk about it, you know. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, and I think the author of Hebrews here is really going to show that to us with the fulfillment of Jeremiah 31 as he goes on here, um, for sure. So let's 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 keep her moving. Yeah. Uh, he, Thank you, though, Matt. That was that was really good. I, I really think you landed a lot of topics and a lot of things in a way which was easy to follow, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Hebrews 8, 7. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then no place would have been sought for a second. Out of the voice. Remember, if the first covenant had been able to reconcile everyone to God, there would be no reason for a second covenant. And I like the voice there because if the first one is unable to reconcile everyone to God, then what did the second covenant do? It reconciled everyone to God. You know, he, having died once and for all, God so loved the whole world, the cosmos. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. We're, we're seeing this love of God this love of God and this patience of God. Adam could not screw up God's eternal will and purpose for his creation. We cannot screw it up. Nobody can screw it up because he took our screw up upon himself, fixed it, and then completed the work. And now we get to have and experience right now the life of what it means to be truly human in Christ. <laughs> Shut out, uh. Shut out, uh, uh. Um, the epistle to the Hebrews, uh, Farley, the superiority of Christ's priesthood. Thus, Christ has attained a more outstanding offering ministry, a more excellent priesthood. This reflects the superiority of the covenant of which he is the priestly mediator. This covenant is better because it has been enacted on better promises. That is, the covenant Christ's priesthood serves leads to God in a way the Jewish covenant never could. The superiority of Christ's covenant over the Jewish one is shown in the fact that the second covenant exists. For if the first Jewish covenant had been blameless and had been able to accomplish all God willed to accomplish for men in the kingdom of God, there would have been no place sought for a second covenant. The fact that God bypassed the Levitical arrangements in glorifying Christ as a high priest before him shows the inadequacy of the Levitical priesthood. Yeah, and this is, I think this is the point of the epistle, right? Yeah. You know, this is, this is really the, 
this is really the, the point of this chapter. So that you, you got the point right there. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And what does that mean for us? It means we can, it means we can cease from our own religious offerings, our own best efforts, our own human doings, right? We, we participate in the vicariousness of Christ and his priesthood, his mediation. I know it may be, Paul, Matt, you guys keep saying the same thing over and over again. I know it's because I'm a drunk. I'm the kind of guy that says, thank you, sir. May I have another? Thank you, sir. May I have another? So we're going to keep serving them up. <laughs> okay. So Hebrews 8, 8 through 9, uh, because finding fault with them, he says, behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I have made with their fathers in that day. When I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they did not continue in my covenant, and I disregarded them, says the Lord. Whoa. Whoa. And here's the Amplified. However, he finds fault with them, showing its inadequacy. When he says, behold, the days will come, says the Lord, when I will make and ratify a new covenant or agreement with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their forefathers on that on the day when I grasped them by the hand to help and re relieve them to and to lead them out of, from the land of Egypt, for they did not abide in my agreement with them. And so I withdrew my favor and disregarded them, says the Lord. Whoa. So this is whoa, about a new covenant. We have a new covenant with, whoa, better promises. Whoa, and God's made you fully, whoa, righteous in him. Whoa, cutting away the, 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 the sinful nature. Whoa. But anyways, there's a new covenant that he's made. Whoa. And I'll, let, let me just read this Kainos thing. I'm going to read part of this definition. This thing is long and ugly looking, but <laughs> we're, we're, let's just read some of this. This is a little about the, the new covenant, Kainos. So this is the next next slide. Kainos is the epitome of a wholly different and miraculous thing, which is brought by the time of salvation. Hence, new is leading the, uh, is a leading theological term in ap uh, apocalyptic promise: a new heaven and a new earth, the new Jerusalem, the new wine of the eschatological banquet, <laughs> the new name, the new song. Yes. Behold, I make all things new. New creation is the glorious end of the revelation of God's salvation. It is the supreme goal of early Christian hope, and it is reflected from the uh, future salvation in the present, since uh, present existence of Christians on the old earth because it has become present salvation in Christ. I'm going to skip some of these uh, uh uh, Greek terms, the new uh, aeon, or uh, uh, aeonion, I believe that's what it's saying right there, or age, well, uh, which has dawned with Christ, brings a new creation, the new crea creation of a new man. Christ himself is the new man, so expressly for the first time in Ephesians 20, uh, 20 uh, one through this is the implication of Jesus's own description of himself, uh, and uh, the initiator of the new creation of the last time. Thus, Kainos becomes a slogan of the reality of salvation, which we know already in Christ. Yes. So there's a lot of <laughs> little Greek nuggets in there, but we're gonna skip them all. But, <laughs> whoa, whoa. Whoa, this new covenant is so much better than the old. Whoa, yes. whoa, 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 whoa. And so it's just, it's kind of a big word in a sense because there's so many implications. But essentially all it's saying is, is the old has passed away and the new has come. Whoa, whoa, yes. and we're new creations in him. And that the old things have gone away. Whoa, whoa, shing, ding, 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 ding. Ding, 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 ding. And just to clarify what I was saying before, I'm not saying that the new hasn't come. The new has come. The yes. old is passed away. 
your sinful nature has been dealt with. But Christ has fully removed those things by the cross. Yes. But sometimes we walk into this issue where stuff does come up. Whoa, 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 where we feel as though we're not new creations. Whoa, whoa. And we, and we feel as though the, the work that Christ has commit, done on the cross, whoa, whoa, is not complete. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. And that is when the high priest of heaven mediates himself to us in our humanity and shows us that we are righteous before him Amen. mediates that victim him as victim on the cross to us and shows us the way whoa whoa the better way whoa whoa where the old things have been dealt with oh, yes. on the cross whoa whoa including the sin and the victim mentality whoa that we might carry and shows us that we are fully righteous in him new creations in him Yes. As surely as all sinned and died in Adam, surely all are reconciled, redeemed, and made alive in Christ. That is the truth. That's the truth of our being. And and it, it could not have happened separate of Christ. And I think that's one of the big points here, too, is that now we see that Christ has done and is. So, as I mentioned before, he's he, the new covenant is him being our God and us being his people. And that could have happened no other way except for the obedient self-offering of the second person of the Trinity, emptying in agreement with the Father's will into our created history and reality, and therefore bringing it to an end in which the history of Adam and the Adamic flesh and the, the call to obedience has been made full. It is finished. Man has been obedient even to death and has been raised anew, meaning not like the old, brand spanking new. You are new. You are new in Christ. You are new right now. And right now we are just experiencing the kingdom of heaven at hand. It is here inside of us. You can't get any closer than to God. If you believe Holy Spirit is God and you believe Holy Spirit is in you, you cannot get any more or closer to the light, to God, and to redemption, forgiveness, and an ability to make you brand new. <laughs> she, 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 she. Yeah, there's like this whole teleological thing, which means whoa, whoa, whoa. The end goal, the end, the end thing, which is uh, yes. they, they talk about the eschaton, the eschatology, or just means last times. Whoa, you know. So there's this whole thing where. Holy, whoa, whoa, Holy Spirit has come to fully reveal the fullness of Christ to us now in this present time, and you have it right now. Whoa, whoa! But there's this, there's this historical thing that's we're waiting in a sense. Whoa, whoa, whoa! For the fullness of times in Christ to appear, where all things have become brand new yes. in our objective reality, where we can see them like we. We see all things as new, like in this reality, like people are not dying and whoa, sin has been fully dealt with and everybody's glowing. Whoa, shing, yes. ding, 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 ding. And creation has been re fully renewed. The lion lays down with the lamb. Whoa, yeah. whoa. So there's this concept, I think, in scripture where, yes, we do have it all already in Christ. Whoa, whoa. But there's also a later fulfillment of the outer workings of all of those things into this reality. And yes. so it constantly, as Christians, we're, whoa, especially as uh, people who are, whoa, ministers of the new covenant, we're kind of dealing with, whoa, this reality of the here and not yet here all the time. We're yes. constantly dealing with this issue that, yes, Christ, whoa, has given you all the fullness of all things, whoa, whoa. But then we're also dealing with this reality of where we're, see we're not seeing some of those realities in other people and maybe ourselves. Yes. So we're constantly having to deal with both of those realities at the same time. Whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa. Whoa, whoa. So yes, you do have the fullness of God. You do have everything. Christ has removed all those things out of out of your life and given you a life brand new. Whoa, whoa. And I believe that's the gospel. That is the good news that you can walk in this today. Whoa, yes. whoa. But there's this also this element of a hope, a hope that that, yeah, uh, granddaddy passed away last week. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And we're going to see him in heavenly places. And we're going to see granddaddy 
fully restored into the fullness that God had for him as well. So yeah. I think that there's there's both of those things happening, I believe, in Scripture. And those things are not fun things to preach. Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, I'm still struggling with it, honestly. I wish, you know, pray for me. I want to know these things greater because, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, you're constantly dealing with, if you're a minister, like, people's failings are like, oh, shoot, like, this thing happened. But yet, like, how do I integrate the fullness of God in their life? Whoa. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. And so there's a pastoral kind of thing happening where we're we're walking with people who are dealing with death, who are dealing with sin, who are dealing with issues, but yet we have this God who has fully done the work and we're mediating that thing to them. Whoa. Yes. Shing, yes. Ding 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 ding. Yeah. You know, and as we preach the good news, as we uh, view this glorious gospel where it is finished, we do see the results of the finished work in our lives. We do see healings occur. We do see supernatural wealth. We do see uh, supernatural righteousness. We do see miracles and signs and wonders. All yeah. those things do happen as we preach the good news of Jesus Christ. Whoa. Yes. Whoa, whoa. An easy one for me is like, are we still participating in the sacrament of communion? Right? Yeah. Com communion is established by, by the Lord himself to do continually until he comes, right? Like that's, that's the point. Like we're not gonna worship God through the sacraments. We are gonna worship God through direct glory on glory, shiny, bright, everlasting, cosmos erecting, planet spanning, um, God, power of God directly, right? And, and we do that through, the, real, for, through the, the, the sacrament of communion in which we participate in the broken and resurrected body of Christ, and we participate in this new covenant of reconciliation and right standing with God through his blood. And we do this until the day of his coming. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and we also have hope that he's going to work it all out. Yes. He's yes. Work it all out. You know, that God's going to, fi God's fixing everything and he has fixed everything through Christ. Whoa. whoa yes. Whoa. Whoa, whoa. He's willing and able. <laughs> willing and able. Whoa. Willing and able. Shing, ding, ding. Uh, Hebrews 8, 10 through 12. We'll just um, read it in the Passion Translation for time's sake. For here is the covenant I will one day establish with the people of Israel. I will embed my laws within their thoughts and fasten them onto their hearts. I will be their loyal God and they will be my loyal people. And the results of this will be that everyone will know me as Lord. There will be no need at all to teach their fellow citizens or brothers by saying, you should know Yahweh, since everyone will know me inwardly, from the most unlikely to the most distinguished, for I will demonstrate my mercy to them and for forgive their evil deeds and never remember again their sins. <laughs> this, this is what the author is trying to tell the Jewish Christians uh, and, and us, right? Is this is this is it, man? This is it. He is done. If you want to believe, if you want to be a believer of the finished work, if you want to be a confessing Christian, we confess this: that we have been given a new heart, that He is our Lord, that we are His people, that He we we are no longer in opposition in our minds or in our hearts, but we are in current vibration. We echo. We mirror. We are ching ding in his will for us and his purpose for us. Amen. Yeah. So uh, the next one, this is a really simple one, but whoa, whoa. It's just, it's just, we're just comparing the old Testament and the new Testament. Whoa, the old Testament had, didn't have as good promises. Whoa, whoa. And there was some conditional stuff that was in there. Whoa, yes. whoa, whoa. But Christ, he's done everything on our behalf. So we just received the good stuff and he's, He's fulfilled all of our conditions. The conditions are not on our back, but they are on Christ's back. He fulfilled all those things. Oh, so that's the purpose of that slide. So you can read it through on your own time if you want. 
This one we could probably skip, take, take a quick look at it if you want. Basically, this is uh, Leo the Great kind of contrasting the fact that Moses received revelation of the law on a mountain and the same God who gave Moses the words uh, as a type and shadow was there with man giving them the truth, the way, and the life. He, he became the, the covenant Pro, the covenant keeper, the covenant, um, in the one who gives the covenant and the one who kept the covenant. And he's saying, and it's all for you, right? <laughs> ding, 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 ding. The spirit of adoption. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And we'll finish with Hebrews 8, 13. Uh, we'll do the Phillips. The mere fact that God speaks of a new covenant or agreement makes the old one out of date. And when a thing grows weak and out of date, it is obviously soon going to be dispensed with altogether. And it has been in Christ, right? It's, and this brings us to Kainos, right? There's not, there, sh there should be no resemblance of the old. It should be completely made new. We didn't, we're not 1985 Chevys with a brand new Tesla motor in them that runs on electricity, but we still have old rundown bodies and roll down windows with an, an AC that doesn't work in an A-track player. No, we, we have been fully equipped with the divine nature that our humanity can contain, hold, and be in fellowship directly with. That is something new. That is something extremely new and only officiated, only mediated, only administered by the high priest and his sacrifice, the person in the work, the reconciliation, the atonement, the salvation by Christ, in Christ, for Christ, and for us. Shing ding. Shing ding ding ding. Yeah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We made it through another one. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to pray us out, Matty B? Yeah, sure. Let's pray us out. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, so much that you are high priest. Whoa, you're forever merciful. Whoa. And even in areas where we don't really fully get the gospel for whatever reason, we're still struggling with it. You know, uh, whatever that area is, you're merciful in those areas. Whoa. Yes. And you mediate. Whoa. You help us understand. Whoa. 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 That you gave yourself fully for us to make us uh, whoa, at one with you and seat us at the right hand of the Father, whoa, yeah. completing the work. Whoa, and you're constantly helping us to understand who you are. You're constantly, whoa, praying for us. Whoa, you're constantly praying for humanity. Whoa, yes. that we might understand our, our position in Christ, that we're fully seated with you. We're fully holy. We're fully righteous. And that all the things that we thought blocked us from God and godliness were removed on the cross. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Whoa, shing, ding, 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 ding. Thank you all Whoa. for joining us. We love you. Thank you, Maddie B, for everything you do. And uh, we'll see you guys next Tuesday. Next God Tuesday. God bless you.